Welcome back to the Forgotten Working Class Podcast. I am Tiffany. I'm John. Today we have with us our guest, Harley. You can see him on TikTok. His name is Blue Collar Cripple. Harley, thank you for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Where are you calling from? I'm from uh, Shakota, Oklahoma. Okay. How old are you? 26. Briefly tell us what you do for work. Uh, I'm a, I, I'm a little bit of a handyman around my neighborhood. I also, uh, do landscaping with my, my pawpaw. Okay. Very nice. What does your handyman, handyman skills include? Uh, mainly yard work. Um, if people around the neighborhood need any yard work, then they call me. Very cool. Do That's you awesome. have like a business name yet? Uh, no. I was working with, I've, I've worked with Pawpaw on and off for about the last 18 years. I started when I was eight and uh, he's retiring after this year. So I just kind of started my own thing around the neighborhood and I, I'm going to take over some of his yards, but I haven't thought of a name yet. Okay. Well, I think blue collar cripple is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, or cripple cut, something like that, but I haven't. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. I like that one. So, if you're ready, tell us how you got the name Blue Collar Cripple and what you're about. Uh, when I was 16, uh, I became paralyzed. I was attacked in the football locker room and I was left paralyzed. Um, I stayed after my off-season workouts and I checked a ball out from one of my coaches. I went to check the ball back in after I finished and he was in a meeting when uh, I went to the locker room because an older kid wanted the football I had and I wouldn't give it to him. So he came up behind me uh, and picked me up, slammed me, and he broke my neck in three places. Jesus. That's where the, uh, that's where the crippled part comes from. Crazy story. Yeah, that's, that's wild. So what grade were you in? Uh, I was two months away from finishing my sophomore year. Wow. Were you able to graduate? Yeah, I graduated. Okay. Good deal. With your same class? Yes. That's incredible. I actually went back to school. Uh, I got hurt in March. I was start. I went back for my first day of junior year uh, in August of the same year. Wow. Jesus. I told you he's incredible. You are so incredibly strong and inspirational. It's unreal. So, did you require any surgeries? I've had more surgeries than I can count. Uh, I had a, a spinal fusion and a cage put on my C5, 6, and 7. I had a trach put in because my right lung collapsed. I've had a lot of, uh, I can't even count how many bronchostomies where they go out and clear my lungs. Oh. Stomach 2 put in because when I had the trach, I couldn't uh, eat or drink. I had surgery on my jaw a little later on to correct my bite. Uh, yeah, I've had quite a few. Crazy. Um, I hated the trach. Yeah, it was it was probably the worst part. It was such a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can't talk. You can't eat. Can't drink. They don't want you to do nothing with it. Oh yeah. And I I was on a vent with it, so they would take me off the vent. And, uh, when I went down to therapy for physical and occupational therapy, they would take me off the vent, and I felt like I was suffocating. Yeah. Panic attacks. So I developed anxiety as well afterwards. Yep. So talking about trachs, this man. So they have <laughs> trained me how to remove a trach. Well, the inner, the inner cannula. You know the yeah. part that goes in and out. Yeah. Because at like 2 o'clock in the morning, this man decides to pull out the inner cannula and you can't scream. You can't do anything. It was it's, completely clogged. Yeah, no I one was around. I couldn't breathe. And I walked out in the hospital. Just like you said, you start to panic because that's your air. And it's clogged up. So I walked out and there's no nurse. There's nobody around. So I was like, okay. Well, went back in and went into the bathroom. And I pulled it out He's myself. It in the sink. I was rinsing it out to clean it. Yeah. And they didn't like that. They frowned upon that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to take them with me in my pockets because at our hospital, we ended up being able to walk around to different floors and go outside for a little bit. But yeah. I had to take them with me because he was just so 
crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the trek was definitely no fun. Uh, I couldn't eat or drink for, let's see, I, I got hurt March 6th. I was in a hospital in Tulsa until March 26th. My lung collapsed the same night I got hurt. So I had a trach from March 6th all the way up until the second week of June. I was only off of a, off the trach for two weeks before I came home from uh, Shriners in Chicago, where I did my therapy. So I was on from March 6th until about June 14th. Wow. So they transferred you from Oklahoma to Shriners. Yeah, uh, the Shriners Hospital in Chicago, it specializes, specializes in spinal cord injuries. And that's where I went and did my uh, first stint of uh, occupational and uh, physical therapy and uh, uh, rehabilitation. How you made it back to school in such a short amount of time, that Crazy. is amazing. Yeah, they wanted me to do uh, online or homeschooling, but I told them no. I'm telling you. you. So before you, you said you got hurt checking out of football, basically. Did you play for the school team? Yeah, I played. I played high school football for Muskogee. So I hope this question doesn't offend you at all. But do you think that your resilience and your strength comes from being an athlete? Like obviously, it's you and your mindset. But being an athlete, you're so competitive. Are you competitive with yourself? Oh, every day, every day. Uh, I don't like to get complacent or get stagnant in life because I feel like once you start trying to be better today than you were yesterday and try to be better tomorrow than you are today, you stop living, really. Once you start becoming stagnant, you, you're not really living life to the fullest and you're not going to have a happy life. And I do attribute that to my football coaches and stealing that in me because every day at practice you're trying to be better at practice today than you were yesterday and you're going to come tomorrow and try to be better than you were today i love it i grew yeah. up playing sports i played softball so i get that that's amazing do you still love football yeah i was actually coaching here in town but this is a this is a small town and it's some small town drama happened and i ended up not coaching this year i'm going to try to coach next year but we'll see there's a lot of politics in sports. Yes, there is, especially youth sports. It was I was coaching first and second grade. Oh wow! I had a little cousin, and I had a kid who calls me Uncle Harley on the team, and they were pretty upset when I got kicked out of coaching. But it is what it is. What do the kids think about you being in a wheelchair? Oh, they love it. They love it. They call me Coach Wheels. Oh, that's oh, awesome. <laughs> And they'll come and they'll get on my back two wheels and they'll ride on the wheelchair. They love it. It's a spectacle to them. Yeah. But that's so amazing that you're out there doing that. I mean, it's showing these children that anything is possible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's another thing I attribute to football. Well, f really football and my pawpaw. Because like I said, I was working with pawpaw from the age of eight on and off for 18 years. Um, but it's the work ethic. Uh, Pawpaw started it, and then football really drove it home. And I take the work ethic that I was taught in football into everyday life. And it's got me pretty good so far. That's incredible. So how long after your injuries do you think that you began to start to push the mower? Uh, the first time I tried to push a mower was the year after, or the summer after my senior year. Um, a spinal cord injury is a heck of a thing. It affects, it, it affects more than just, you know, people say my hands don't work properly, my legs don't work, but there, it goes, it's, it's kind of like an iceberg. You only see the surface, but underneath there's a whole lot of underlying issues. Yeah. Like I don't have any core my for, i'm paralyzed from about the it don't look like it but i'm paralyzed from the bottom of my chest down so i don't have good balance so trying to push a mower at first was hard because there's also parts of my arms that are still paralyzed the muscles are still trying to activate so i didn't have a lot of strength um and then 
A few few years later, I got on a riding mower, but I hit a tree root and it knocked me off, so it kind of made me gun shy. Um, but really, I started mowing again two summers ago. No, last summer, um, I was working at Walmart, and Paw Paw was still mowing. Uh, but Paw Paw has a tendency to not drink water when he's out there. And Oklahoma summers, they're terrible. I mean, we live right next door to Satan in the summer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so do we. Yeah, feeling on that. Down here in Florida. So, so Paul, he tends to get dehydrated in the summer, and every every summer he'll take a hospital trip um, for a severe urinary tract infection, and he did that last summer. But last summer it was so bad that uh, he was on the verge of dying because his kidneys were collapsing, and he had a whole lot of stuff wrong with him. He was septic from it. So I told him, I said, look, you're either going to retire or I'm going to quit Walmart and I'm going to start helping you. And he didn't want to retire. Um, he's been doing it since before I was born. He moved He moved to Oklahoma in 94. I was born in 97. Um, and he's been doing it since he moved here. Uh, but, yeah, I quit Walmart last year and started helping him. And last summer I didn't take any pay from him. I just, you know, that's his living. And I didn't want – I just wanted to be out there in case anything happened, you know. But this summer – I was like, yeah, hey, you're going to pay me this summer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You are such a good person. Family, family man. So incredible. What are your other hobbies? Uh, I see you like guns. I do. I do a lot. I actually build my own. Yeah. I build my own ARs. Um, fishing is another one of my hobbies. I go, oh, yeah. I go fishing a lot. Um really anything to do with the outdoors or going to the gym. That's awesome. Yeah. You saw his gym picture. So yeah. Incredible. Yeah. How many days do you go to the gym? Uh, I try to go five. Uh, that hasn't been happening here lately because I've, I've kind of strained my muscles a little bit. So it's been three to four, sometimes less, but when I'm in the groove of things, sometimes it's seven. I'm, I'm pretty active. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I try and do five days a week. That's what I try to get into. But you have to listen to your body, and right now you're actually on a couple days down. Yeah, my back. I messed up my back. So they now, extracted his lat muscle, his latissimus yeah. dorsi muscle, and they used it as a head flap. So on his your left side. Yeah, they took my left lat muscle out, and they put it on my head. So I only have my right. So when I do... You know, the workouts of your back and everything. I got to go light. And if I go just a, just enough over, it's all messed up. Yeah. Like three, four days. Yeah. It, it was a big shock for me because when I got hurt, it was, it was actually two weeks to the day after my 16th birthday. So I was, I was pretty strong. Uh, I, we were in off season. So we were in the, the weight room five days a week. Uh, and I was seeing a lot of results. And then I was, when I got hurt, I was 185 to 195 pounds. I would fluctuate. And then when I came back from the hospital, I was 125 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I did, I, I lost Ooh. body fat and I lost the majority of my muscle. So it went, you know, bench pressing 275 pounds to can't barely raise your arms. Yeah. That's crazy. Do you drive now? I, I don't. I don't drive right now. No. Okay. Have you since? Uh, not since. Uh, it's just expensive. Yeah. Uh, disabled driving is expensive, and haven't made it quite big enough on TikTok to do that yet. Guys, if you're watching Blue Collar Cripple, go follow him. That's right. Get on his page. Amazing. Yeah. Any other hobbies? Not off, not off the top of my head, you know. I really just go to the gym. If I'm not mowing or doing odd jobs, uh, or if the weather's nice, I'll go fishing or I'm playing with my guns. <laughs> I seen you like music. Yeah, I do. I do like music a lot. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Who's your favorite singer? Right now, it's Zach Bryan. Very cool. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's he's from just right up the road. No, really? Yeah, he's from Oolaga, Oklahoma. That's awesome. Very neat. So do you belong to any 
organizations or support groups, stuff like that? Um, I'm in a, I was in a lot of spinal injury support groups on Facebook, but I ended up getting kicked out of them. Why yeah. that? Uh, there's a stigma with the spinal cord injury community that once you receive your SCI, life's pretty much. And I got tired of all the cynicism and all the negative posts on there. So I started posting positive things and the people who run those groups didn't like that what yeah there's a lot of people on there who's like they're they just their mindset isn't right they they want they want the world to pity them and they want to just live a, a miserable life and it, that's not what i'm about i'm i want oh. i want to go out there i want to have a fun and happy life i don't want anybody to pity me or treat me different you know and I started posting stuff in the gym and what got me kicked out was I posted a, a video of me working out and what's your excuse? And that they didn't like that very much and they kicked me out of <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You got kicked out for trying to send out positive vibes and trying to enlighten people, you know? It's Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I posted a video on TikTok about it a few days ago. It's like 99% of the disability community, spinal cord injuries especially, have that mindset. And then there's that 1% that still live life how they would without a disability. But that 99% is what the people who are able body sees, and that's how they treat that other 1%. They treat that 1% the way the 99% want to be, want to be treated. And it, it drives me crazy. You are truly unbelievable. Yeah, it's you have the unstoppable mindset, and I, I love it. I try, which I wish a lot more people would have that too. Because I mean, we've met a bunch of people that have been hurt and this and that, and you have a lot of people that are still depressed and they talk about how you know their life sucks and this and that. I get it. I understand. You know, you've had a lot taken away. You know, that's. Your life isn't over. Yeah. I, I you tell, can keep going forward. I tell people that I'm I'm gonna do everything I used to do. I'm just gonna do it sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So when you do your mowing, how do you how do you do all that? Uh I posted a few videos on how I get on and off the mower. Um I, I have a zero turn. Okay. And uh that's what I use normally, but I posted a video of me push mowing. That's because I took the zero turn down there, and as soon as I engaged the deck, the delt, the the deck belt broke, so my blades weren't spinning. So I had to get that done before we got a big rainstorm. So I was I was out there push mowing it. How did you do that? How how do you push mow? Are you in an electric wheelchair when you do that, or do you have your regular wheelchair? Well, when I first tried to push mow uh, a couple years after my injury, I I was in my regular wheelchair. It didn't work. Um, but this time I was in my electric chair and it was a lot easier. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't imagine trying to do it with a regular wheelchair. I it, give you props for that. It's not exactly safe, but it got the job done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting it done. So the thing in your yard that you used to stand. Yeah. Was that. Like, is that hospital made or did you make that? Uh, a company called Easy Stand or Evolve makes it. It's just a standing frame. And I'm actually on their influencer list for 2024. I'm going to get more information on that in December. But it's made by a company that makes medical equipment. I get that question a lot if I made it. I'm not, I'm not smart enough to make something like that. <laughs> we were looking at it and it was... It was very interesting. Yeah. Looking. Yeah. Yeah. I, ha I, I have a love hate relationship with it. That's for sure. Yeah. It's, it's good for me to do it, but it's kind of, it's kind of aggravating at the same time. Yeah. You'll get up and you'll get dizzy and you got to go down and you didn't stand up for as long as you want. And it's just, and then once you, once you go up your first time, you're not going to get very long your second, third time. Your blood pressure is already messed up. And 
it's aggravating, but it's good for weight bearing and it's good for muscle uh, extension in your legs. Yeah. So I do it, but I don't always like it. Crazy. Pushing yourself. I mean, yeah, I mean, amazing. you don't have to tell him that. He's yeah. got the motivation. He's He knows what's up. Yeah. Awesome. So, wow. You just truly take my breath away. Like, you mow lawns, you fish, you love guns, you still coach football when you can. Like, you live in life. Absolutely. You're, you're continuing to keep going, you're not stopping. Yeah. That's good to see. Yeah. Uh, there was one doctor when, in Chicago. He told me that I'd pretty much never be independent and I would never live the life that I'm living now. I said some not so kind words to him, but <laughs> isn't that nice when they tell you that kind of stuff? Yeah, I'm proving him wrong. So, yep. Hope he stumbles across my TikTok. So. <laughs> oh yeah, they told me all kinds of stuff in the hospital. Well, like I tell people, you know, medicine is not by the book. No, it's all that willpower. Yeah, that's you. They told me when I woke out of my coma that you're more likely never going to walk again. They said that I probably wouldn't see, my eyes wouldn't work again, and I wouldn't be able to talk right because how the, the first strike they put in, how it was set up. Yeah. And when they told me all that, I was pissed. I was like, no, no. It, the, it's kind of like the doctors don't want to give you any hope. They want to they wanna make it as bleak and as miserable as they can. Right. They had me planning for a funeral. Oh, yeah. Like, I didn't know what to expect. Oh, yeah. When I first when I first got hurt, I mean, this is an hour afterwards. I got taken to the hospital that's in Muskogee by ambulance. And then I got life flighted to the one in Tulsa. And I remember I ran out of consciousness because I was going into shock. But I remember my sister showing up first because she just so happened to be at a job training uh, in Tulsa, right down the road. So she showed up first, so I wasn't in the hospital uh, alone. And I remember I asked her if I'll ever play football again. And she said, we got bigger things to worry about. And that that hospital is a Catholic hospital. And they sent nuns in to pray over me because the doctor said I was going to die. Yep. I was put with the pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they sent nuns in to pray. And they told my sister that I probably wouldn't make it. And then they said that I probably wouldn't make it through the first three nights. Jesus. Crazy. When when this happened to you, was it long before people found you? When I got hurt, the kid, he sat there and it, he actually made it worse because he tried to pick me up and like move me and set me up. And I had no control of anything. The only thing that I could feel was right where my spine got broke. And it was just the worst pain that I've ever felt in my life. So he picked me up and set me up against a bench. And my head was just bobbling, moving that spinal cord around. And he was scared and wouldn't go get a coach. So I would say it was probably five to ten minutes before other players came in and went and got a coach. My God. Jeez. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Yeah, it was it was rough. You know, another reason we started this podcast, obviously this happened to our family where John got hurt and stuff, but we have children and we want our children to be good people. You know, our children meeting other children who have who are in wheelchairs, who are amputees, who have been burned, they are it is opening their minds to so much and reminding them to be kind to everyone. It is. And if you are watching this and you have children or you just have hate in your heart for people, please think twice because this never should have happened to you, Harley. And I'm going to get emotional, but I mean, I feel blessed to have met you because you're amazing, but this just breaks my heart that this happened to you at such a young age over a freaking football like children are awful please teach your children to do better and be better it's true and 
you know, she said that, you know, we have kids and our youngest one is five. And it's funny that she just brought this up because earlier today, so for Christmas every year, we raise toys for the kids that have been burned or injured down in uh, Miami. And we go down there and we give all the toys to these kids and they pick out what they want. And it's great. But there's kids there that have been burned head to toe, you know, and they're like three or four. And then you got some that are, you know, six, seven, eight. And to see these children like that, you know, it, it breaks your heart. But my son today told me that because, you know, we're receiving gifts from Amazon and people. So he he seen that we had more toys. And he said, they're going to be so happy. I said, that's right. He said, the kids with boo-boos. I said, yep. He said, yeah. He goes, I like the kids with boo-boos. They're fun to play with. I said, that's right. And he said, they're just normal kids just to have boo-boos like you. I said, exactly. Yeah. Just normal people. They might look different, but that's just a normal person. I mean, there ain't nothing scary, which, you know, I, I've scared kids before. <laughs> they look at my head and they're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, well. There I am. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the reasons I got into coaching youth football is because I believe that not not only just sports, but a coach, a mentor like that can have an impact on a child's life. Yes. And he can they can take that child and they can shape him through the years to be a productive member of society rather than being a kid who's out running the streets just not doing anything good for themselves. That's right. And that's that's what, that's the main reason I got into it, you know, but I can still do that just through the kids that I know who call me Uncle Harley. I love it. Yeah, but you're also doing it now with your TikTok videos. You know, you're inspiring people to that have been paralyzed, have been hurt to do whatever. You're inspiring them. They look at you and they see that you're out mowing fucking lawns in a wheelchair. I mean, yeah. Just like you said, you post that video. What's your excuse? To, exactly. You're out mowing a lawn in a wheelchair. Don't tell me you can't do nothing else. This, this dude's out here doing that. Yeah. So they see that and, you know, it inspires people to be like, well, if he can do that, what can I do? Yeah, kind of. That's I, amazing. I usually go live on TikTok when I'm at the gym or something like that. And I had a lady in there the other day telling me that I should be at home because I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> and that, that she was like, you shouldn't be out in the world doing stuff like this. The world should cater to you. I'm like, she was like 70 something years old too. I'm like, you have not lived a good life. I guarantee you that you have lived a cynical and just miserable life. I, I promise you. you That's know, crazy. She pretty I much told the world should adapt to me. I'm like, no, I'm going to adapt to the world. That's right. I love you, Harley. Yeah, you're awesome. <laughs> you're a good dude. Do you, so like, okay, that poor woman, we'll pray for her. Do you have hate in your heart for the person who did this? I did for a long time. Yeah, that's understandable. I did. Uh, it was probably, it was probably, uh, I got hurt in 2013. I would say it was 2016, 2017 before I really came to terms with what happened. And, and in those three to four years, I was a pretty shitty person. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. I was, I wasn't fun to be around. I wasn't the person I am now. I didn't do all the things that I did. I sat in my room, I watched TV or I played video games and, you know, hated the world and it all changed. But, uh, I was, I did for a long time, but that's why on my TikToks when I talk about injury, um, I won't put his name out and, there's one there, there's one reason why and that's because i don't want anything to happen to him yeah you know, i don't want some crazy person from tiktok to go find him and hurt him or something like that or for him to you know receive any threats or anything like that i don't want that um it was 10 and a half years ago going on 11 i hope he's living a good life i don't wish anything bad for him you know i don't particularly have anything good to say about him but i don't hold any resentment or any hatred towards him anymore did you ever receive an apology uh we spoke one time after the injury and it was actually i can't remember if it was the first day of my junior year or the second day i was sitting at the cafeteria in between classes uh sitting at one of the tables talking to a couple of my football coaches and he came up behind me again 
and he put his arm around me, said, I love you, and then he walked off. So maybe that was his form of apology, but I never heard the words, I'm sorry, or anything like that. I can't believe you had to go back to school with this person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't believe that he would still be in the school. Well. He didn't finish his junior year, which was the year I got hurt. Uh, there was, from what I'm told, there was a lot of kids who were friends with me that wanted to hurt him afterwards. I'm not sure true, but that's, that's just what I'm told. Um, but nothing happened to him from the school or legally, because when I was first interviewed, it was 30 minutes after I got hurt. Talk. And then two weeks after I was in the hospital, I had the trait, so I couldn't talk. I couldn't write uh, yet because I hadn't learned how, and I still didn't have control over my arms. I was still strapped down. Um, and they were reading my lips and I was on around the clock pain medicine. So I don't remember giving either one of those statements. And they said in between the first and second statement, something changed. So they could, we couldn't press charges on him or couldn't do anything because they said it was his word against mine. Well, people have to live with their actions. Every oh, I bet he lives with it every day. And I'm just glad that you've found forgiveness, even if it's taken you 10 years. It's very respectful of you, honorable of you. You're living your life the best way you know how. And it seems like every day you're achieving new different things again i really respect that of you yeah i try it, it, every day is hard you know i'm sure it's hard for you too to not get up and be resentful towards your situation but oh yeah it's like i said earlier it's a mindset you got to have a mindset that you know the world's not out to get to, out to get you you know you got to be out to get the world so it's yeah. just just the mindset and i wish more people at he had it specifically that's that's my little sub community that i'm in but it, it's so bad it's so bad out there do you have any inspiring words for your community i mean every the only thing i tell them and i tell them this all the time any chance i get is don't let your disability define you don't let it control what you can do uh you go out and define your disability because the, the world, the able-bodied world is going to put this label on you that you can only do so much. And it's your job to go out there and show them that you can do more than what they think. That's what, I, that's what I tell them. And some listen, the majority don't. Yeah. You got to get out of that dark spot and keep going. Because if you stay in there, time doesn't stop. No, it don't. Time keeps going. So if you sit in that dark spot and you stay there, you're literally you're missing life you're not just you have, wasting it yeah god god gave you a life for a reason everything that everything that happened to you everything that happened to me that was god's doing because he knew that we were strong enough to carry that testimony and spread it and you're you're just wasting it you're wasting your opportunity to spread goodness and spread in my case spread his his word because i spread his word any chance i get but you're just wasting your opportunity to live a good life and spread positivity if you stay in that dark spot. Yep. What is your goal for the next five years? Where yep. do you see yourself in five years? The only goal I have right now, uh, it's not a goal for myself, actually. It's a goal uh, it's to make enough money on TikTok to buy Papa a truck because his is going out and we can't go fishing right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> little bit selfish but at the same time he needs it and i need it to go fishing so i love it do you live with him uh so we own we own the two houses on the property he lives next door i live in this one this is all i got this little room it was a storage room it was bare plywood ceilings it was that stick up look like wood plank nasty sheets of siding and i moved back here not last February, but the February of 2022. And uh, yeah, uh, we tore it down. Me and him hung drywall. We hung the ceilings. So I'm next door, his brother lives above me. And my little brother lives with him now. So we live right next door to each other. 
Awesome. But you're basically living independently. Yeah. 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 That's a yeah. Huge, you just said you just hung drywall. Well, I yeah, I did. I did that with his help, but yeah, we we got it done. There's TikToks about it. It wasn't fun. I'll never. I'm gonna hand the drywall jobs to someone else. I'll, I won't do that. But listen, I can't get this one to paint a damn wall. I, I hate painting. Hanging drywall. I hate painting oh, yeah. more than anything. Paint in there that we still got to put on the wall because there's there's patches. But I just I got so burnt out on remodeling this thing. I'm like, look, next year. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Pick it up in a year. Yeah. Save that for a rainy day. But everything's done. We just gotta. We got to finish painting, then we got to put floors in, and then I'll put baseboards and crown molding on, and that's it. I did, I did the ceilings myself. I burnt them and stained, or didn't stain them, but burnt them that way. And then me and Papa I hung them up. I had, I, I took a, I unscrewed the broom from the broom handle, and I would hold it up there while he screwed it in. <laughs> that's incredible. that. It's quick thinking. Yeah. There's ways to do everything. Just got to think right. about it. Work with what you got. Yeah. Improvising. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. I mean, when we, you are blue collar. Like yeah. everything you're talking about <laughs> is blue collar. You've been mowing lawn since you were a little kid. If you saw on our website, it's blue collar blood type. You yeah. are blue collar. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I attribute that to Pawpaw, you know, I didn't choose to go out there at eight years old and help him. He, he was, he, he made me, he made yeah. me. Yeah, no choice. Get out there. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And I mean, I'm better for it. I mean, I have the work ethic that not a lot of people in my, in my generation have, you know, I see Absolutely. a lot of people that they don't want to do manual labor. They don't. And these are able bodied people. They don't want to go out and work a nine to five. They want to sit at home on a computer and, stream video games and try and make a living like that you know that's all fine and well if you can do it but that's a very small community that that society doesn't need society's always going to need linemen they're always going to need welders carpenters they're always going to need manual labor hands they're they don't need you yep and that's what i try to tell friends and family but you know it's 2023. It's the age of the digital whatever. And I, I, I mean, I do make money from TikTok. It's not a lot, but, you know, so I do benefit from that. But the majority of my income, I still get disability on top of what I'm making mowing yards. I don't make much mowing yards, but it's a little bit more than what I would just get on disability. Truly motivational. Yeah everything that you're doing please don't ever stop stop sharing your story whether it's on tiktok i think you should start a youtube channel i have one you do yep what is it harley fangs crippled outdoors oh my goodness it started uh it started in 2018 uh i i, I got back into fishing and hunting and guns and everything in 2016 into 2016 2017 <laughs> Uh, when I met my best friend and I really I really give him a lot of credit for how I am today because when I met him uh, I was still in that dark place and then I met him one day by chance I known him uh, he's 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 almost 10 years older than me uh, he was actually friends with my stepbrother growing up uh, but I moved out to where his parents lived and just met him by chance one day and then the next day he messaged me and he said DTF with the fishing emoji. I was like, yep, let's go fishing. And from there on, it changed. You know, I didn't know how to cast a pole. I didn't know how to reel a pole or anything like that. He, but he's, he told me, he's like, man, fuck this. We're going to figure it out. And I, I'm where I am today because of him, because he, he took the time to help me learn how to do stuff again. And it's amazing. We, we don't see each other often. He moved away and got all city on me. He moved up to, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, he still comes up. He comes down every now and then he drives a daggum Tesla now. Oh my goodness. No big, 
pickup trucks like we're used to, but we still see each other every now and then. That's so awesome. Yeah. You got to be grateful for the ones in your lives who are willing to you. give you that push, that push to keep going. Yeah. yeah. It's what people need. And yeah. guys, if you're watching and if you feel like you don't have those people, we're here for you. We support you. Life can be lonely, but again, thank the ones who you have in your life. Love the ones who you have in your life. And we're always here for you, too. Yep. Yeah, yeah we're here. There, there was a time where uh, I thought about ending it. And I texted him and told him what was going on. And he was about, I mean, he was a good 45 minutes away. Uh, he was staying at his ex-mother-in-law's house while they were out for the weekend. And he got to my house in 10 minutes and sat there and talked with me for three hours. That's an amazing friend. Yeah, that's a really good person. I don't know how he got there that fast, so, but he got he got there. We've lost people very close in our lives to suicide, and we... I can tell you, I, I mean, here. after I got hurt, probably about a year out of the hospital... I never tried to attempt it or anything like that, but you know, I always, I always told her it'd be easier if I would have just died. It'd be so much easier. And she's, you know, don't say that. You know, it's true. But yeah. now, going through everything I went through, all the surgeries, all the pain, suffering, you know, it's it's damn near torture. The stuff that you have to go through, and then to come out of that, and then say, you know what, I want to end it you throwing everything that you've conquered out. Yeah. It's not worth it. You've yeah. got that far and you, know, you just got to keep going. It'll get better. To end it would be, would have been the easiest way. I mean, I'm sure it would have been easier on my family. Cause you know, having a son in a wheelchair who can't really do much for himself, it's not easy. And I'll, I mean, I'll be honest. My stepmom wasn't the best. She didn't make me feel very good about myself, but, uh, there's nothing worth having that's easy to get. No. You're not going to get a good life easy. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to go through some hard days. And ten, even 10 years removed, there's still hard days. I mean, there's days where I wake up and I'm like, why do I keep going? And I, I tell myself it's because I don't want to be a little bitch. That's why. <laughs> that's right. That's you have right. You to be your own biggest fan in this life. No matter what you've been through, you have to be your own biggest fan. Yeah. We've that been or if you, crazy times. you see it as you see it as work almost too. After, you know, I got hurt, I wasn't working, I still ain't working. But to go through all that, it's almost like work. You're putting in crazy hours. It's rough. You're gonna get hurt. It's gonna be sore the next day. It's bad. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> My uh so I didn't get to finish my junior year because I ended up having a blood clot in my left leg that went to my lung. So I had a pulmonary embolism. I actually code blued for like 15 minutes. Uh, so I did online school from September and finished out my junior year online. Uh, and then I went back senior year. And from day one of senior year until the last month, I was doing therapy two hours a day, every day at school. And then three hours a day at home. And it was it was a lot. Yeah, and that's rough. It, it wasn't by choice. And some of the therapists even said I was doing too much. But like, a, again, I said my stepmom wasn't the best person. And everything had to be her way. So that was all her doing. But I didn't really benefit from that therapy. Because it was kind of like when you overwork a muscle too much, you stop growing that muscle. Yep hurting it and that's that's kind of what was happening um but now I, I wish i could get physical therapy still i would just take the therapist to my gym and we could work out there but uh my insurance won't cover it unless it's through a hospital and i i've learned that hospital physical therapy is not very good i i have a therapy company that just from uh, the day I got back until the day that I stopped doing physical therapy in my senior year. And that those are the only physical therapists I'll use because I've created a relationship with them. They know my body. They know 
we have that bond and that understanding and that comfort level with them. So now uh, insurance won't pay for that. So I just go to the gym and work out myself. Which is truly incredible because you're doing it all yourself. I mean, yeah. you know what your body can handle. A therapist doesn't exactly know what you're feeling or anything like that. It's yeah. you go to the gym by yourself. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I think the gym is almost a mile away from my house and I just roll, roll on over. Oh my goodness. Fuck nay. And that heat too. Yeah, it's it's kind of miserable in the winter and summer. Right now, it's not too bad. I probably won't go today because it's raining. Uh, but it if I if I don't work out, then the depression starts coming in. And yeah, when you sit still and you start getting in your own thoughts, yes, it's terrible. That's yeah. You and start I, sitting there and you're thinking. I, I've always been that way. I've always been the one who has to be doing something. Even before I got hurt, it was it was either football or I was outside shooting bow and arrows or doing something like that. I couldn't just sit at, sit in the house, watch TV, play video games. I mean, I could do that for a little bit, but then at some yep. point, I can't. I can't just sit there. I gotta. I I would read a I, I would read a book. I I, I had to be doing something. And it, it's even more so now. I didn't. I didn't have depression before I got hurt. It came after, uh, and it started because I didn't have. I didn't know that I could do the things that I used to. I had the mindset that, like I said, the majority of the people in the spinal cord injury have uh, is that their life was over and they couldn't do the things they used to do. Um, but once, I, like I said, once I met my best friend Thomas, that all changed, and that's when that depression kind of went out. And all the fishing, the hunting, the shooting guns, the all that came back in. And once you find that, once you find what you love and you're passionate about, you do it all the time. And that's my anti. I was on antidepressants, and they made me a zombie. I did not like the way they made me felt, and I stopped taking them. Got that depression back. Met him, and now that's my antidepressant. Is living an active life. I love it. Mm. So incredible. All right. So I have one for you. Okay. Let's quiz this one. You want to ask him? Do you remember? Oh, God. Is it, the, is it the sweet tea question? Well, you already blew it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I want to see if you would catch on to it. Yesterday, I told him, I told Harley, what was the first thing that you wanted right out of your coma? Keep talking. Sweet tea. <laughs> Sweet tea and chew. Last last night, I was on live, and I had a big mason jar full of sweet tea, and I said, when I meet my future wife, one of the requirements is she has to keep fresh sweet tea in the fridge at all times. Oh. Yeah, I wanted sweet tea, and I wanted... Uh, Copenhagen and they're like uh you can't have that and I was like well just just let me get a pinch and they were like no and I was like just a pinch I'm like nope and then uh you know with the feeding tube you <laughs> you don't get to taste anything you don't and then uh I couldn't drink anything but they'd give you did you get ice chips yes ice chips and uh so I couldn't I couldn't brush my teeth but what they had were these little Yep. Sponges. Yeah. <laughs> they would put those in my mouth just with water. And I, I, it got to the point where I kind of got creative. I was like, man, I'm hot. Can I get a wet rag, cold, wet rag? So they would put it on my head. And once the nurses left, I would get it and I would squeeze the water into my mouth. <laughs> yeah. They'd give me ice chips. And for anybody that's watching, if you haven't been in the hospital where they give you ice chips because you're not allowed to eat or drink. You don't understand that ice chips is like crack. It was like, hey, you want some ice chips? Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me those. Give me those. And then they would give them to me and they'd say, you can't swallow them. Yeah, you got to spit them back out. Spit them back out. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then they'd be like, all right, spit it out. And be like, no, I already swallowed it. And they're like, we told you not to. And you're like, how, how am I not supposed to do that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It. 
So you had a stomach tube as well? I had the, it went through my nose, a feeding, a feeding tube. tube, and down in. So I had one. I actually have a second belly button right here is what I call it. Uh, the scar, it went straight into my stomach. And they would, so uh, spinal cord injuries on some levels, they suffer from uh, severe UTIs because we have to cath ourselves. We can't go to the, the restroom like like able-bodied people. Um, so they would put, because I still had the, the trait, so they would put cranberry juice down my feeding tube, which uh, you can do. Uh, uh, as soon as they put it down and it hit my stomach, you could feel how cold it was right here in your throat and you could taste it. So when you put stuff through this feeding tube in your stomach, you can taste it in your mouth. Wow. Yeah, see, I couldn't so taste you, anything. You still have it? Uh, no, I don't have the feeding tube anymore. I have the scar, though. Yeah. Okay. I did beg the nurse when I was in the ICU, you know, couldn't talk, couldn't say anything. I was laying in the bed, and I remember looking up, and all the nurses were in front of my room, and they all had Cuban coffee. And they were talking, you know, and then one of them was like, all right, we have an extra one. Anybody want it? And I could hear him. So all I could do is I would kick my end of my bed and then be like, what's the problem? And I, I told them, put that in my feeding, in my feeding tube. And they're yes. like, we cannot do that. And I was like, come on one time. I won't tell anybody. They were like, no, yeah. no. When I, when I first was able to start eating, the only thing I wanted was Sonic. Sonic I, at I all places? I don't know if y'all have Sonic, but yeah. Sonic was born and raised in Oklahoma. That's like an Oklahoma culinary masterpiece. Sonic is. <laughs> all, all I wanted from Sonic was the footlong chili cheese coney and the water. That's it. Yeah, I wanted food. That, that hospital food was, God, is it terrible. And then uh, they have this, they have this one, it's a group therapy for all the new uh, patients. It's where you, you, you go into, they have a little apartment built and your family has to stay there for like a week or two before you can leave. So you can see how it is to live with the spinal cord injury at home. The nurses don't help you, the, nothing. They don't help you at all. It's just you and your, your parents or whoever it is. Well, they took all the patients in there and they're like, all right, we're going to cook. I'm like, what are we going to cook? They said, it's up to y'all. I said, if it's not, Beans, cornbread, and fried potatoes. Not doing it. <laughs> they said, "What's cornbread?" What? Yeah. They said, "What's cornbread?" I said, "Are you serious?" Yeah. Are you joking? That was in Chicago. Yes, in Chicago. Okay, go figure. <laughs> Instead of potatoes, like the the big brown potatoes, they got those little red potatoes, and they're like, "This is healthier." I said, "The point of fried potatoes is not to be healthy." Yeah, you're frying it. It's not healthy at all. Yeah, and they didn't let us fry it. They had us roast it, and it just wasn't. So you can cook for yourself now? Yeah. Yeah, I cook all the time. Wow. What's That's the, awesome. What's your favorite meal that you make? Uh, steak. Yep. On a grill or stove? Uh, I can do it in a skillet on a stove, or I like the charcoal grill. Yeah. Very, very. That's cool. awesome. Yes. Yeah. You're killer, man, dude. You ain't letting nothing stop you. That's good. That's good to see. Yeah. That you've overcome it and you're just moving on with life and enjoying life. Yeah, I try. That's what we like to see. I hope that people see this video and they also watch your TikToks. And I really do hope that people see you and that brings inspiration to them to get out and move. Yeah. Regardless Can't stay inside. Regardless if people are still stuck in their depression or PTSD, you know, everybody has a different story and different reason why yeah. they're injured. Please don't ever stop trying to inspire people. You know, it might take some people 10 years. It might take some people less. It might take some people more. And all that we can do for them is just spread love and kindness and continue to say that anything is possible. That's all right. You know, yeah, yesterday on my uh, on my live, I went live at the gym and I had people in there telling me, oh, I want to go to the gym, but I don't have a workout partner or, oh, I want to go to the gym, but 
I can't find the time. And I'm like, you got the same 24 hours I do, you know. Make time and you, you can go by yourself. You, I mean, you can make friends in the gym that will meet you there. Yeah, and then I was like, there, you don't want to go because you don't have a partner. That's just an excuse not to go. Yep. She, well, I need someone to show me where to start. And I picked up the weight. I was like, you start right here with a weight in your hand. And <laughs> you didn't go, but maybe that reached someone. I don't know. I bet it did. I bet it did. <laughs> Sometimes I say stuff. And I'm like, maybe I should have said it a little bit less harsh. But no. Sometimes you need that rude awakening. Yeah, life is, you say it all the time to our kids, life is hard. No, life, life ain't, life's not fair. Life's I tell my kids, fair. life's not fair and ain't nothing in this world for free. No, not at all. And That's uh, two things you need to know. <laughs> when I got hurt, this is a story that I was told. I'm not sure how completely true it is, but... uh the football coaches went to my parents' house and went to visit them, and they went in my bedroom. And I don't know if you guys have seen uh, the Rocky movie where he's talking to his son about how hard life hits. Well, I had written that down, and I would read it every day before I went to school and every day before I went to bed. So they took that out of my bedroom, and they I think they said they made a poster of it and put it up in the somewhere in the, the football facility. I never that's saw awesome. but that's what I was told. And then they sent that to me. No, my football coach, my head coach actually came and visited me in Chicago and he brought it with him. That's so awesome. We hung it up. And there, there was a bunch of different like letters and stuff that the school did. But that, that, that speech really, it really got me through some dark days in Chicago. And I really didn't start making progress until my stepmom left. Like I said, she wasn't a good person. Yeah. And I did not want to do anything when she was there. But once she left, because she had to come back for a couple weeks. Once she left, from the day she left to the day she got back, I was a completely different person. Well, I'm glad that you found your inspiration and your motivation. You're truly an amazing person. I'm glad you made a TikTok. So then we found you. <laughs> yeah. We get to meet you. When I saw you, I'm like, I've got to know this kid. Like, no offense, you're not a kid. You're only a little bit younger than us. But I'm like, we got to know you. Like, we need to be friends. When, so humble I think, and yeah, so strong. You know, one of the biggest things I think that helps people, and I, I know it helps me because I do it all the time, is humor. Yes. Yeah. And to see your name on TikTok, blue collar cripple. And I was like, he has a good sense of humor. He's like awesome. Arcing ahead. Yeah. Arcing ahead. When I got I, electrocuted to the head. Yeah. When, <laughs> when I first started TikTok, I, I, I got, I went viral for, I did not go viral for being in a wheelchair. I went viral cause I posted a, 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 a small clip with a funny sound trying to grab my ex-fiance's booby. That's why I, went, I first went viral. And then uh, when when I first went viral, I got to like 20-something thousand followers for that one video. I didn't post after that. And then I got a question about why I'm in a wheelchair. No, I got a question that says, why is your name Harley Hot Wheels? Because that was my name before I changed it to Blue Collar Cripple. It was Harley Hot Wheels. That was a good one, too. <laughs> and I... And I posted a video explaining that I'm in a wheelchair and why uh, why I'm in a wheelchair, and that took off. I mean, that went a few million views. And every time I post, like I will, every time I see a comment where they ask why I'm in a wheelchair, I'm gonna make a video because it it goes at least a hundred thousand, and that is good money for a TikTok creator. A hundred thousand views is is good money. But I got famous on TikTok by accident. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm, but I mean it's I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, it's it's starting you know, you're starting something new, you're continuing living out your life and inspiring others. Inspiring others and I mean you've you're doing it all. It's incredible. Yeah, sometimes I make inappropriate wheelchair jokes at the worst times. Yes. <laughs> I get overwell, but some most of the times I don't. But I laugh and that's all that matters. Listen. You, Usually it makes Everyone. people. That's right. Usually it makes people uncomfortable because they don't know whether they can laugh or not. 
See, I get people ask me what happened to you. And so my daughter, our daughter is 13 and she came up with this a couple of years ago was that when people ask, you know, dad, when people ask you what happened, you should come up with something, you know, a completely different story, something, you know, make something up. So people ask you, Hey, what happened to you? Oh, you know, I was outside fishing and an iguana attacked me. Yeah. And they're like, what? Or, yeah, it was a mosquito bite, you know, got infected. And they're like, oh, my God. So the hardest part for me about being in a wheelchair is te- is trying to tell kids how I got hurt. Because yeah, what happened to me, it was kind of evil. And I don't want to be the first one to introduce kids to that kind of evil. Yeah. Usually I'm like, I, I didn't listen to my mom. Or I did, uh, I did drugs one time or something like that. <laughs> tell people that this is what happened when he acted up. Yeah, she would tell people this is what happens when you don't listen to your wife. And people yeah. look at her like, a fucking psycho. And th- there's there's one there was one time, it was at football practice and a kid was standing right next to his mom and they were talking to me and he, he was like Coach Wheels, how did you, why, why are you in a wheelchair? Did you break your legs? I was like, no, I just didn't listen to my mom and she broke them for me and he looked at his mom, she, he was terrible. He was terrible. <laughs> And I know for a fact that uh, the next thing she asked him to do, he did. Was he did, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, then sometimes I'll be on live or something like that, and people are like, why are you in a wheelchair? And I, you know, I'm feeling kind of comical. I'm like, I'm just lazy. <laughs> like, like, if I'm at the gym, I'll be like, yeah, I don't want to do leg day today. Oh, my goodness. Or they'll ask me, because I wear jeans everywhere, jeans and boots. It's, that's what I wear, jeans and cowboy boots. And they'll be like, why are you in the gym with jeans and cowboy boots? I'm like, I'm not doing leg day. I skip leg day every day. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Harley, do something else. Thank you. Thank I'm you glad, so yeah. much for being here. I'm glad you get to see the positive side of life and make it better for you and other people. Yeah, I try. Like I said, there's still hard days where you, yeah. don't, you don't see a lot of positives, but those days are what make you stronger. The easy days aren't going to make you strong. The The hard days are what really make you stronger and build character. I agree. Whatever you do, just please never give up because you truly are amazing. Thank you. You truly are. And yeah. I'm so happy we got to get with you and talk. Making new friends. Yes. Yep. Yep. Some lifelong friends in us. Well, it was nice being here. Thanks for having me. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, not that I can think of. I think we pretty much covered it. Tell us one more time your YouTube channel. It's called Harley Fane's Crippled Outdoors. Love it. And I will share it. And again, you can see Harley on TikTok at Blue Collar Cripple. Harley, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Never lose your strength and that sense of humor. Thank you. Truly awesome. Have a good one. You too.